Well, okay, so I have one more pleasure, and that is to <laughs> announce the Lifetime Achievement Award, uh, as, was, as was stated. And uh, uh, it's really a, uh, a special pleasure uh, for me, for, at least for two reasons. One is that the, uh, our awardee, uh, Sarah Kurtz, uh, is uh, a part of our uh, NREL, our National uh, Renewable Energy Laboratory, so uh, part, of the, uh, part of the family. And of course, I'm going to say more about uh, Sarah's, Sarah's work, but also uh, that before my seemingly interminable recusals began at the Department of Energy, I was able to also present the first Lifetime Achievement Award, which was to uh, Millie, uh, Millie Dresselhaus, uh, a name uh, I think very, very well known, both for her science, for her, her mentorship, and by the way, uh, for uh, being head of our Office of Science at DOE for at least the last year of the, of the Clinton uh, administration. I have to say uh, that uh, Sarah is joining some uh, fabulous uh, company uh, as the fifth, uh, fifth awardee. I mentioned Millie, but then in 2013, uh, Maxine Savitz. Um, uh, and I have to, again, I've had the pleasure of working very closely with her, uh, especially on uh, PCAS, the President's Council of Advisors. Uh, Sue Tierney uh, in 2014. I don't know if, I think Maxine is not here. I don't know if Sue is here or not. Um, uh, Sue Tierney in 2014, uh, another well-known person, especially in the electricity sector and, and, uh, and policy, uh, Mary Nichols uh, in 2015, uh, uh, someone who has uh, almost as long service in California government as Jerry Brown, the governor, uh, uh, including doing it twice uh, over, uh, over a long period, uh, and now again uh, Sarah. Uh, uh, Sarah Kurtz uh, uh, this year. Um, again, she is, she's co-director of the uh, National Center for Photovoltaics and a principal scientist at NREL. Um, and uh, her contributions uh, to SunShot, uh, the SunShot initiative, have been, uh, been enormous. And that's our drive to make, uh, make large-scale uh, solar energy systems uh, cost competitive with, others, with other sources uh, by the end of this, of this decade. Uh, she joined NREL in 1985 uh, and was a founding member of the team that launched a revolution in high-efficiency multi-junction devices. Uh, that, and that continues to this day. Uh, and this breakthrough uh, became the standard for solar energy for satellite applications and the Mars rovers. Uh, and so that was a pretty good start. Uh, later, she co-founded and now helps lead a task force uh, uh, creating international standards for the uh, next stage of growth for the industry. She founded and runs a yearly PV reliability workshop that, that is considered a must attend uh, by the PV industry. In one of many tributes to her, Dick Swanson, the founder of, the, of leading PV, uh, American PV manufacturer, SunPower, uh, said, and it's a quote, I and the rest of our industry rest easier at night knowing that Sarah is on this case this is a huge service that could save billions of dollars over time. And this more, um, uh, again, another, another nomination uh, a letter, uh, I'll quote from, uh, what remains to be celebrated is how Sarah has done all of this as a role model and mentor to new generations of scientists and engineers who are as passionate about the future of clean, renewable energy uh, as she is. Aspiring women can look to her and know that not only is clean energy an exciting topic and critical to the future, but also that women can succeed and have a major impact in the field, and that they can do that by being their own person, as Sarah Kurtz has done now for 30 plus years. So I would just add that, uh, again, clearly I'm very pleased and, and uh, to, to acknowledge these scientific achievements, uh, these contributions to the advancement of women in clean energy uh, with this 2016 Lifetime Achievement Award, again, um, joining uh, a, a very, very elite set of, of, of women who have contributed uh, so much. So with that, I'd like to uh, present the award. And Sarah, please. <laughs> Congratulations, this is really great. No, this is terrific.
great. You hold that so I can clap. <laughs> That's great. And we're going to have one other tribute first before you make remarks. And that's great. And uh, uh, before you get to make your remarks, however, uh, Sarah, uh, we're going to have one of your colleagues, uh, Dr. Adele Temboli, uh, say a few words about your leadership and mentorship. Hi. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, Sarah's mentorship of me at NREL. Um, so before I started working at NREL, um, I had read all of these foundational papers uh, in the field of photovoltaics uh, written by these famous NREL scientists. Um, and when I showed up at NREL, it was um, maybe not surprising, but was surprising to me that all of these scientists were very friendly, very welcoming, and um, very willing to share their knowledge um, with those of us who were newer to the field. Um, and Sarah is really the, the greatest example of this at NREL. Um, so when I first started working there, Sarah um, put me on one of her projects in photovoltaics. Um, and because she's a very busy person, she runs the reliability group and does a number of other things. Um, and this was sort of outside the scope of her day-to-day um, -day activities. Um, she invited me to meet with her at her house um, every Saturday afternoon to work on this project together. So I spent several months um, coming to Sarah's house every Saturday afternoon and working with her um, through the analysis of some photovoltaic data. Um, at this point, I was pretty new to the field of photovoltaics, um, and she was extremely patient in teaching me everything that I needed to know for this project. Um, and still, when I look back on this experience today, I think this is the time in my life when I learned uh, the most about photovoltaics and learned the most rapidly um, due to her incredible willingness to uh, share her time with me. Um, and ever since then, even though Sarah is not my group manager um, and isn't on any shared projects with me, she's still one of the first people that I go to when I need help with basically anything. Um, she is able to provide um, both context and big picture guidance on things like new research ideas um, and is also able to provide um, really deep insights into the fundamentals of the science if I have data that I'm stuck on or something like that. Um, and it's not just me. Sarah is incredibly willing to share her time and help um, anyone who comes to her and asks, basically. Um, and this extends to other people at NREL, but also to um, people who don't work at NREL, even people who aren't in the photovoltaics field at all. She sees this as part of her job to um, help in any way that she can. Um, and so you heard a little bit about the pioneering work that Sarah did on 3.5 multi-junction photovoltaics. And this is really foundational both for space applications um, and also for uh, concentrator pho photovoltaics, which is a large industry. Um, but she's not someone who's content to just do great science. She always wants to make sure that the work that she's doing has um, the greatest possible impact on solar energy as a whole. And so because of that, she realized um, really early on that as the photovoltaics industry grew, there was a greater need um, to address issues of module performance and reliability. Um, and so because of that, she kind of switched roles from being someone doing material science um, on a fundamental level towards um, running the NREL performance and reliability group. Um, as a manager, she has very deep respect from uh, the scientists who work in her group, um, both for her rigorous approach to uh, working on, out through their data with them um, and her insights into her work, um, and also for her role as uh, a very excellent manager. So she's very proactive, she's very thoughtful, um, and she tackles issues head on and always works hard to find win-win solutions when there are problems. But in addition to this, um, her, uh, uh, her influence at NREL extends beyond her group. Um, she wants to make sure that all of us within the National Center for Photovoltaics and beyond um, understand the big picture of the work that we're doing. Um, and so to this end, she's uh, started a lot of uh, really uh, interesting discussions with us about uh, issues related to terawatt scaling of solar energy. And so we now have a weekly lunch discussion that Sarah leads um, where we discuss kind of big picture issues within solar energy like um, economic issues, grid integration, variability, and things like that. Um, and this has really been a beneficial experience for all of us because it brings together scientists from multiple different centers and groups at NREL who typically wouldn't have any reason to interact um, and allows us to really understand each other's work, understand all of the context, um, and think harder about the impact of the science that we're doing. 
So in addition to all of these other things, Sarah also um, runs the HOPE Workshop, which is the hands-on PV experience, which uh, brings in graduate students and their advisors to NREL every summer um, and very care carefully um, walks them through uh, the whole process involved in making a variety of different solar cells um, and then testing and analyzing the data for these solar cells. Um, and because this is an in-lab experience, uh, it's a tremendous amount of work to put this workshop together. Um, and Sarah does most of this herself. And she does that because she really values all of the personal connections that she makes um, with the students and the professors. Um, and the fact that she tackles all of these different projects means that Sarah is um, probably the hardest working person I know. And I think anyone who works at NRL can attest to that. Um, and that's paid off to make her one of the best scientists I know. So I'm really excited excited to um, be involved in presenting her with this award. She deserves it so much. Congratulations, Sarah. Oh, thank you. So I know, I know that I'm the only thing that stands between you and lunch at the moment, so I'll try to be quite brief. So that was a very wonderful tribute from um, both of you, and very fun to spend Saturday afternoons with Adele talking about how PV solar cells work. And did you know that um, if you really want to understand how to get to a high efficiency solar cell, you need to understand how black bodies work. Um, and for those of you who are physicists, that connection might not be obvious, but it's actually quite fun. Um, a, it's a true uh, privilege and honor to be here with all of you today and a very special privilege to be given this award. I think many of you in the room share with me the thought that um, there are a lot of problems out there and if at the end of our lives we can say we've made some small amount of difference, that that's our goal, but it seems some days to be very difficult. And so receiving this award for me personally is very gratifying because it tells me that maybe I've had a little bit of success somewhere. Also, it's pretty cool to think about that the technology we developed at NREL is, is um, powering some of the Mars rovers running around and a lot of the satellites up there, so that's quite fun. There are many people um, I've been very blessed and privileged to work with over the years. Uh, Roy Gordon uh, was my thesis advisor, introduced me to solar cells and when I was in graduate school. And it was in 1986 I joined Jerry Olson to work on his invention of the gallium phosphide gallium arsenide cell. Um, and then more recently, working on reliability, John Wolgamuth has been a tremendous mentor to help us all understand about um, all the, how the modules work. Um, but it's also a real privilege to be here with all of the women today. We have from NREL, um, Bobby Garrett was actually the one who first talked me into taking on the reliability group, which was quite a change for my career. And Barb Goodman has been a really wonderful example and role model for how to be a good manager and how to help each person achieve their potential. Um, and more recently, uh, Nancy Hagel has been like a rock as we're trying to work through a lot of difficult transitions. Um, she and I, I think, are the only uh, female managers within the science area that we work with 100 or 200 people. And so um, we've, it, we've been able to stick together and talk about how actually making the work environment more attractive for women also makes it more attractive for everyone. And um, so that's been really fun. I think also the, um, it's been really wonderful. I also want to say my daughter's here today. My family's been very supportive and um, I appreciate, especially as my work hours have been long sometimes, um, their support. So it's very special to have my daughter here today as well. It's also a very special thing to live in a time to witness the transformation of the um, electricity. When I think back over, when I started working in solar back in the early 80s, um, there weren't PV systems out there in general. And now when you look at how much electricity is being generated, about 5% here annually in California, about 1% across the nation, and now when you create the, the, the pie and look at the size of the slice that's going to renewable energy, it's growing and growing and growing. Um, and although most of that is driven by policy, it really is a strong technology. Um, I think California set a wonderful example of not only investing in the PV, but also investing in the other aspects in storage. Um, and looking at, I see the transition now as we get more and more electricity coming from solar, 
question is what will we do with all of it during the day? And so um, investing in storage and investing in electric vehicles, like what Tesla is doing, will be enabling um, the, as, as we go forward. But the other piece of that is as we diversify our research agendas, we also still need to continue the research on PV to reduce the cost. Um, and the really beautiful thing about renewable energy is that the more you invest in it, the cheaper it gets. And that with that beauty, you can see that we can eventually uh, power the whole world in a way that's clean. Um, we can bring, the sooner that we can bring electricity to the billion people who don't have it today, the sooner we can reduce the rate at which the CO2 emissions are growing, um, the sooner all of us will be happy. But in the end, the vision that I think we're all working toward together is the concept that with the clean renewable energy, we'll be able to bring prosperity to the whole world. So thank you.